All right, John and Kenny here one more time. And, and you're going to share about how this experience of the Tend to Be prayer really changed you. So talk about that. Okay. Uh, I started to say a side benefit, but it, it was anything but a side benefit of John and I praying was uh, that my life was changed in relation uh, to prayer. The Lord saved me as an adult when I was 30 years old, and so um, I started going to church and uh, reading my Bible and uh, began to pray, but it was um, totally a... Um, an obligatory, if that's a word, um, it is now. <laughs> uh, uh, activity. Yeah. <laughs> because it, as I look back on it, and if I was really honest, uh, I had uh, no expectancy that God would answer my prayers. And so that went on for years, and I, I prayed a lot of prayer, and I'm confident that God answered, and I saw some answered prayer. But I never was really expecting um, when I pray, but maybe because of that um, lack of faith or whatever <clears throat> that it was, when John and I began to pray, God chose to uh, show me that he could answer prayer. At that time, I was the uh, church planner strategist for the Denver uh, Baptist Association, and um, almost immediately, um, our, the prayer that John and I prayed for workers began to be answered. I would have people come in uh, to my office that maybe I talked to uh, years before and say, I'm ready now to, uh, to do this. Or someone would call in, uh, from somewhere out of state and say, we feel like God is calling us to come to Denver yeah. to plant a church. And, uh, and it was I, so exciting to see those tend to be answered, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was really cool. immediately with the emails, the calls, people coming in, my uh, whole perspective on prayer changed to the point where I, my testimony is that through those years in my uh, denominational role, I would get up every morning fully confident that I was going to get a phone call, I was going to get an email, or somebody was going to knock on my office door wanting to talk about church planning. Yeah. You coined a couple of great phrases. I want you to just to say a word about them. One of them was you called the Ten to be Prayer the leadership solution. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, as a um, uh, missionary leader with uh, Southern Baptist, I would go to a lot of conferences and a lot of uh, strategy planning deals about how do we enlist people to um, um, be church planners. I even resorted one time to uh, sending a letter and a, uh, a public relations type, uh, uh, chamber of commerce type thing, what it amounted to, to every graduate of Southern Baptist Seminary wow. to, about uh, needing to plant churches and opportunities in Denver. And my response was zero. <laughs> zero. Uh, and then I would fly sometimes to uh, places and set up a table and promote church planting in Denver. Again, very little uh, response. But then, as John and I prayed, uh, I came to see that it wasn't my activity, but it was uh, my father's activity that thrust people out. And uh, so that became, for me, and for some others uh, that saw what was happening, the leadership, the leadership solution for uh, any kind of movement Amen. in church planning. Another great phrase that I remember you saying was, God does the heavy lifting. What do you mean by that? Well, our, def our default mode, and mine, I have to admit, uh, for so many years and sometime even now, is that we default from prayer to activity. Um, very quickly, and so we we think that um, we are so needed in this process. And I'm not putting down our efforts at all, but we need to have spirit-led activity, and not flesh activity, which I was king of for uh, for many years. So it came to us that we really believe that. It's 
in God's heart to do the heavy lifting. Yeah. And rather than us trying to do it and then calling him in when we strained ourselves to the point. And, and therefore, he gets the credit Amen. He gets for the all of that. Because yeah. if we do it, he's not glorified. Yeah, all. yeah. There was one other that I was trying to think of. You, you were always great at coming up with these great Texas sayings. I love it. So, well, anyway, Kenny, thank you. I just, it's one of the real privileges of my life uh, to be friends with you and especially to have that history and all that God taught us um, about, about uh, praying this little prayer and to see how God has used this literally around the world. And well, working. for me too, John, and this isn't mutual admiration society at all, but it changed my life. And, and it has changed people that you and I have shared it with that I've seen. Um, Thank you. Thank you, brother.